Hey guys, welcome back to the Hold Project. Today we're going to rebuild that old Rochester Ford Jet for the Cadillac. Hope you enjoy this one. If you haven't checked out our Facebook page, go ahead and do that too. Links in the description. Let's get to work. <clears throat> Alright, well now that we've got the engine dropped off, let's try to get this carb cleaned up a little bit here. I really would like to get... So you can definitely see here that somebody has done some repair on this. And what we're probably going to do, we're just going to take this whole thing here and <clears throat> drop her in the old ultrasonic cleaner here. If you guys don't have one of these or have never used one and you do a lot of carburetor rebuilds, this is one of the best things that you could ever do. And this is what mine is. It's a Vivor. <clears throat> Decent sized. Nothing crazy huge. But typically what I'll do is I'll just take... This is probably going to overflow a little bit. But I'll just take carb. Drop it in. Might have to end up taking this off here so it'll fit. Uh, but this will help soften the gaskets up just to get it uh, to where you can take it apart. We've already got a carb kit on order, so don't really care if we ruin the gaskets. Oh, got a little fart in there. But uh, basically, we just dunk it uh, and let it eat in here. I get it good and hot, and all I use, Dawn dish soap, hot water, and it works, it works great. So we'll let this girl soak, and there we've got her, we've got her mostly submerged. That'll be good enough to uh, get it to the point where we can take it, uh, take it apart, soften those gaskets up. So we'll just set the time here. <clears throat> All right, as you can see just from that quick first 15 minutes, uh, this separated. Obviously, it's been repaired. We'll look further into that. Start cleaning up all this rust in here. <clears throat> so we're going to probably just split this. And, uh, hey, enough of that. Well, don't sass me. Back to what I was talking about. We'll get this split, uh, soak it, clean it, and uh, <clears throat> we'll show you what it looks like after. We'll tear it down, do a full rebuild on it. All right, we're going to make up our little concoction here as seen on TV. Just put an ounce or two in here. Good enough. And then we got our Dawn dish soap. Throw just a tickle of this in. Mm-hmm. There we go. We'll kick this thing on, get her forty nine degrees Celsius, forty eight. That's just my tap water. Gets pretty hot. So we'll let this do its thing. And we'll start tearing this carb apart. As you can see, this thing is pretty nasty. And yes, I am working in PJ pants and slippers because that's just how we're going to do it today. Again, I apologize if uh, I'm a little raspy. 
still fighting this crap off. So we got that cotter pin there. We got one more here. Slip this guy out. And we'll disconnect that shaft there. Pop that out. Take that guy out, set him off to the side. Take that cotter pin out. And, oh, that's got two on it. Take him off. And we'll split this. Somebody has most definitely been in here. <clears throat> All these flatheads are, you can tell, you know. But that's to be expected on something this old. Take all these apart here. Most of these are not very tight. So that's good. And honestly, I've never had one of these apart. I've had Edelbrokes apart, Hollies. Never had a Rochester apart. So I'm probably not gonna know the technical name for some of the stuff in this, but that's okay. Carburetor's a carburetor. They'll work on the same principle. And the main ingredient in having a good running vehicle is to have a clean carburetor. So that's what we're after. I tell you what, this thing has crap load of fasteners on it. Holy Moses. <clears throat> so some of these are longer than others. Try best you can to keep them in little groups. There's about a 99% chance. I won't remember where some of them go. But you'll figure that out as you put it back together. I don't know why they gotta have so many different flavors. Uh, screws on these, but you'll have that in these smaller farming communities, I suppose. All sorts of messed up. Look at that. Just trashed. Well, come on. Are you? Well, that son of a gun's not even tight. That clearly has the wrong screw in it. Because even though it was tight, it wasn't tightly seated. So that's cool. <laughs> Funny. All right, <clears throat> here's all your floats. Needle in the seat, 
under here, needle and seat. <coughs> Excuse me, needle and seat also in there and there. So looks like those have to come off to get the gasket out. But we're going to set that in the old, uh, we're going to clean it first. So she's going in the old hot tank. And I will not turn that on while we, while we are recording. Because the frequency of that thing screws with the speaker on the phone. All right. Hopefully you can see in there. That is nasty. No bueno. Take that out. Spring down in there. So, now we will, we're just going to take the base plate off. Take that guy out. Man, nothing on this thing was tight. I'm sure soaking it the first time around helped. Man, you wouldn't believe how bored a guy can get when he can't go to work. And I work out in the field. I don't normally see people. But company said, nope, nope, don't bother coming in. I said, okay. So here we are. And we should have, where did I put my flathead? Oh, by the way, I wanted to show you guys this. So if you remember, I think it was episode three, when I was pulling these push rods out and I showed you that I thought they were plugged. Well, let me make sure you can see this. These are solid. There. These are solid push rods. So, I brought them all home, tossed them in the ultrasonic cleaner, hit them with a Scotch Bright pad. Those will be going back in the car. Nothing wrong with those at all. I'll take this big guy out of the middle here. Can't screw up where that one goes, can you? Base plate off. Peel that gasket. Okay, again, nasty. She will go in the hot tank. And then, last but not least, we'll take this off, throw the rest of this in. And uh, we'll see what it looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll see what it looks like uh, when it all comes out. All right, that was run number one through the ultrasonic cleaner. And they need to go through again. And as you can see, <clears throat> that water's nasty. So we're going to change that out and run them through again. All right, clean water. <clears throat> Throw those two halves in and we'll let them roll. All right. 
gave it a few days so I could get a voice back. Let's go ahead and get back on this car. So everything's been through the ultrasonic cleaner a couple times. And then uh, also hit with some uh, Berman carb cleaner just to wash off any of the residual stuff. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and see what we've got here in our kit. There's our needles and seats, clips, all that kind of good stuff. Power valve, perfect. New filter. Some of the stuff's not gonna get used in this kit. It covers a couple different carbs. This is obviously a uh, Rochester 4Jet. 4GC, not a Quadrajet. Clearly. And so we're going to have to kind of dig through and see what we've got and line up things as best as we can as we go. So we'll take all these, set those off to the side for now. Pretty decent kit. There's a lot. There's a lot in here. Take those, set them over there for now. Okay, a lot of stuff. Got my cheat sheet here. Uh, these are just, you know, they're just slightly different. So, Let's start with this section. We're just gonna do uh, one section at a time here. No reason to confuse parts and make things uh, overly complicated. So we'll start here. And let me find how that should work. Put some new goodies in here and, you know, make your run, uh, like a brand new unit. Can't get my damn fingers around that. And let me get a knife. Apparently that uh, needs a new blade. Okay, so we got our gasket. And let me get a pick. Okay. Take that gasket out. Drop our new one in there. Put that guy in. And I'm kind of a I'm kind of a weirdo. I always 
tend to keep all the stuff that uh, that I take out. I know. People are probably saying, just throw all that shit away. Well, sometimes I like to keep it just in case. And actually, let's see here. That's a thin one. Looks like there's two different styles of gaskets that go under these uh, seats here. What did I put in here? That one, that second one that's in there is a thick one. And that's more of a thin style, which is what came out. So that's what we're going to go with. I'm guessing the other one's probably for a different, uh, different style. Okay. Put him back in there. Grab our thin one here. Don't go buck nasty on these they don't need to be they need to be tight but if you're like me and have to use one of these big screwdrivers to uh, fit this you don't want to slip and snap one of the tabs off okay there's that and it looks like we've got two different styles of hangers for the seats. Okay. There's that guy. Let's put these old ones back in here. Because like I said, I keep all this crap. Throw it back in the card kit, in the box. Throw it on the shelf. You just never know when you might need it. Okay, there we go. Looks like we've got a tiny spring there. Let's see if one of those came in our kit here. see one in there don't see one in there okay so we're not going to worry about that let's go ahead and set these back in
make sure you get your needle setting in there correctly. Push your pin back through. We're going to have to look at this here because I'm not exactly sure how that gets set up. So that would be power piston, power piston assembly. Oh, I see. Okay. That goes. That goes under that. And get your needle in place there. And get that set down. Okay. There's that section. All cleaned, new needles and seats. Oh, that's what we didn't do. Shit. Almost forgot you have to put this gasket on before you put your floats on. All right. Moving on. Okay, got to be gaskets under these Venturis. Okay, there's a little bit of crud still in there that needs to be cleaned up. So we'll get that stuff there and I don't remember what this little plate's called. Idle compensator valve screw, idle compensator valve, and idle compensator valve gasket. Okay. It's just a little spring-loaded guy. This is like a spring, the top part, and it opens up that orifice there to allow air Okay, there's that, that gasket. And we've got one of those in our kit, of course. Pretty sure this is new old stock. O'Reilly Auto Parts for the win again. I don't know about you guys, but I don't mind advanced. 98% of everything I get is all from O'Reilly, always has been. And that's mainly because way back in the day, when I was a young lad going through business school and tech school, I worked for AutoZone as one of my part-time jobs. And... uh you know, I just, I didn't care for the brand and stuff of their parts. Everything just always seemed cheap. You know, their Duralast brand. Not saying there's anything wrong with it. I just prefer not to use it. <clears throat> this gasket kit is made by uh, Standard Ignition Products, I believe is what it, yeah. Talk. I've never seen a rebuild kit uh, that brand before, but it seems like a good quality kit. I have used uh, 
some kind of knockoff brand ones. You know, uh, one card kit fits all for uh, the Holly card on my Impala. And uh, wasn't overly impressed. Some of the gaskets were too uh, too large. They didn't seat right. Uh, gave me all kinds of problems. So I ended up just ordering a correct kit. And I was in a pinch one day is what happened. And I went and just picked it up from the parts store. It wasn't, it wasn't great. And it put me farther into a pinch because then I, then I had two, two carb kits laying around. That looks better. I was pretty surprised. I was doing some research on these Rochester four jets and there really wasn't a ton of information on them. The only thing really that I could find, uh, they were the predecessor to the quadra jet and, uh, it appeared they were only used from like the mid 50s up to what 66 maybe I can't remember when it said the quadra jet uh, came into production but <clears throat> this was its uh, predecessor and it was Buicks and Cadillacs Oldsmobile used it like I said there were some variations of it Depending on the horsepower model of the engine, uh, obviously change the carb for different CFM. So, yeah, it was it was kind of neat reading about them. Uh, what little bit I could find seemed like there was uh, just not a ton of information out there. I did find a couple uh, remanufactured or used ones during my searching and I about had to sit down. I was blown away with how expensive they are. So hopefully we don't have any issues with this one because I can tell you what. Uh, I would not be purchasing one of these. I would put uh, an Edelbrock or Holly or something on it. I wouldn't even bother with one of these. Although it's kind of Kind of fun working on it, just because I've never seen one. Never had one apart. Yeah, she's crusty. A little bit. I mean, it's not terrible, but... Definitely not great. I mean, you can kind of see... Little bit of crud. Okay. Hose down this section. All right. Put this side back together here. I wonder what my brother's doing today. <clears throat> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully he tells you guys uh, a funny story that he told me. <laughs> if you don't, I guess I guess I'll just have to tell it in the next episode. But it has something to do with the Turbo 400 that we pulled out of the Impala.
during his rebuild. I'll just say that. I'll leave it at that. All right. So we got that. And so that's our choke side. I want to see. Let's pull these jets out. These have definitely been out before. 18, does that make sense? Or is it 81? I'm gonna go with 81. So these are, these are gonna be the primaries. A lot of white flaky stuff in this carb. Old fuel, a lot of years sitting. A little bit of crap down in there. There we go, that's better. Wow, dirty little. Again, jets don't need to be, and they don't need to be bench pressed in there. Just snug them down. Okay, let's pull the secondaries out. Hmm. Can't read that one. 58. I'm going to go with 85. 81, 85. All right. Let's have a look see on this side. Go ahead and take our idle mixture screws out. Man, somebody's buried that one. Hopefully this one's not as bad as that. Or the same, I guess, for that matter. Well, they're not great. Here's the thing with these idle mixture screws. They don't need to be... When you're starting at your base setting and you screw them all the way in, you just barely see them. And then you count your turns coming back out. If you start cranking these things down in there to get them tight, tight, what you do is you end up screwing up the end of your, your needle here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me show it, get you closer. See that taper on that now? <clears throat> That's because it's been buried. It's been buried into its uh, seat in there. And they don't need to be. They just need to be lightly seated. And all you're doing is when you screw this in, you're plugging a hole and as you back it out it slowly lets a little more air a little more air a little more air 
as you're going towards the tip of your needle here. And that's fine tuning your your air to fuel mixture. And if you can see, let me get a if you can see this little hole here and this little hole. And those are the holes that those needles are going into. And essentially that's that would be manifold vacuum because it's under your plates. So those are your those are your adjustments for your for your idle and some kits come will come with those. And some don't, and I don't believe this one did. No, it did not. And that's too bad. Because these are damaged. So, <clears throat> basically what's that, what that's going to do is you're not going to get as much adjustment out of them. We'll still try them, obviously, because I don't have any other ones. But I will be on the hunt for some... those are pretty beat up so normally for me and most of the carbs that I've worked on it's barely seat one half one one half who knows if that's going to be even close on this carb but that's where we're going to start it you want to make sure that these two are always the same if you've got a vacuum gauge hooked up and you're tuning Tune your carb. Whatever you do to this side, you want to do to this side. And if you're not getting the same effect from this side as you are this side, then you've got something going on in the carb. <clears throat> but this is, you know, going to lean out this bank. This is going to lean out this bank. You want everything in sync. And this guy is... An idle speed, an air, uh, well, <laughs> idle speed. It's your idle control, your idle speed control. Cleaned up nice. And I don't have the slightest what this setting is supposed to be on this. But you can see. This orifice right here, that's coming all the way through and it's either blocking that passage or unblocking it, letting more air, <clears throat> more air or less air. Let's get this power valve switched out. Take our retainer off there. Take our spring off there. Actually, you know what? We have a new one. Okay, yeah, it fits it. Just wasn't sure it looked a little different. Okay, that's fine. And there is, there is check ball down in there. And I believe, yes, there's different sizes. Three different sizes of those so if you replace that and you want to leave it how it was just make sure that you select the same size ball that you took out and put it in that kit and I don't think there's anything wrong with ours so we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it these little kits are nice and that moves good. Got our new boot for the top side of it. I think that's our winner. You just want to make sure that you don't want your gasket to cover 
or you're losing your CFMs. Don't want to block your flow. Yep, I think that's it. Put on your little locating tabs there. All right, we got to make a small adjustment here because they didn't have these screws in the right spots. So we need to figure out, I think the longer, obviously this guy gets a long one. I think a long one goes in here too. I think it, I think she goes all the way through. All right, tighten these up. Okay. Now We need to find that guy. And <clears throat> get that guy on there. Get our choke put back on. Okay. All we really got left here is just some little odd ZNZs. Put a couple brackets together, throw in a couple uh, clips. And there we have it. Rebuilt Rochester 
or jet carburetor. So I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody watching. If you haven't checked out our Facebook page, uh, click on the link and you can go check that out. Um, we've got a bunch of fun stuff coming up. Pretty excited to bring you guys along. Should be a great time. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.